Gracious, good morning. Welcome to Morning Moxie with Larissa. As you know, maybe, it is, uh, June is National Home Ownership Month. So I thought I should, of course, make another video on the topic. I hope you watched the last one, which was what to know before you buy a home. But this one is actually that was about uh, home ownership for veterans. The before you buy a home was on my real estate channel. Today's topic is how to get started investing in real estate. So you may have heard that this is a hot, hot summer. And I don't just mean temperatures, although California was roasted over the past several days. It was super hot, not fit for man or beast. And today the temperatures have dropped a little bit. Not so much the real estate market. It is still a seller's market, which means uh, low inventory and multiple bids. So I still, in spite of the odds, if you will, I'm still recommending that one get invested in real estate because there are just so many benefits. Um, now, you may or may not know in the past, I've mentioned that I am what's called a buy and hold real estate investor, which means I prefer rental property. I'm not so much into the flipping um, or wholesaling, um, but which is not to say people have not made money doing that. That's just not what I'm going to suggest for you. I wanted to give you some tips and strategies, if you will, on how to get started investing in real estate. And there are actually a couple of things that you can do, even if you don't have a lot of money. First things first, though, is that you should always start with a plan. Now, the plan is going to include multiple things, which is probably... First of all, going to be uh, the funds that you will use to invest in real estate, right? How are you going to accumulate the funds and, um, you know, what type of real estate do you want to buy? Are you buying an apartment complex, a duplex, a uh, single family, multifamily, that type of thing? Um, and then also, of course, how are you going to get in that? What type of loan are you going to get? Um, but you also want to think about how long you plan to hold this property and or investment and how long or what is your exit strategy? Are you going to sell and cash out? Are you going to sell and buy another piece and et cetera? What is your timeline for this to happen? So you do want to uh, consider uh, creating this like a business plan. So I mean, there's your personal residence, which is what I normally talk about, but um, as a real estate broker. I also work with investors. And so I want to talk to you about that side of it today. So that's why I'm talking about your timeline for holding and the types of different types of property. So you may have already uh, realized that, um, you know, if you buy a duplex, that is one way, buy a duplex, live in one side, rent out the other. Um, the way I got started was, um, you know, I bought a house, lived in it. And then when I was ready to move up, I kept that property and then bought another property. Uh, the first time I did that, let's see, how did I do that? Well, actually the first time, I know what happened, <laughs> sorry. I bought my first properties with my uh, VA certificate. Actually the first one, I think we used my husband's VA certificate and in the second property, well, we kept this first house to rent and then the second property, we used my VA certificate. So we both were in the military. So we had VA loans that we could get. So that hopefully cleared up one mystery. Yes, you can buy a um, another property. You can buy more than one property if you have more than one certificate. Now, if you want to use the same certificate, that first loan would have to be paid off. Anyhow, anyway, what I wanted to get across to you is that you buy your starter home. And then when you're ready to move up, you keep that property, rent it out, and then move your buy your second and so on. That is the first way. Now, when you get to the second property, which is, um, actually I sold that one. <clears throat> and from the proceeds, I bought another property, a condo and also a rental property. So you could use the proceeds from the seller house to buy more than one house, right? Um, or you can, I don't recommend this, but only for the super disciplined with steady income, you could get a home equity line of credit and buy rental property, but I don't recommend that you use your house as a piggy bank because if something happens to your income, you've increased the debt on that property and then you're gonna be in a deep doo-doo. So I don't recommend that, but I know a lot of people do that. That is one way to get started if you have steady income, low debt. 
because you just don't want to get in over your head, right? That's the first thing. Don't get in over your head. Um, but, you know, I have, outside of a VA loan, if you have good credit, just get another loan. So consider, like I said, you have your single family, duplex, fourplex, right? Either with the duplex and the fourplex, even if you use a VA loan, you can buy multi, you can buy up to a fourplex as long as you're living in one of the units. But even without a VA loan, still consider buying a duplex, fourplex, renting one, living in one and renting out the other units, right? That's, that's you know, golden. And if you want multifamily, more than four units, well, maybe you get a partner, you know, maybe that's, but if you get a partner, even if it's family, get the agreement in writing so all the terms are spelled out and it's a legal binding document, right? And then what I wanna suggest is if you are, as a first time buyer, buy locally. Now, depending on where you live, uh, it may be more challenging like in California, it's expensive in almost all parts of California. Now, if you go deeper into the Valley or um, Central California, it could be a little bit more affordable, but obviously next to the bigger cities, it is gonna be uh, more expensive and difficult to do. Not impossible, just difficult because you could buy a fixer upper and you know, if you are handy or have some construction funds, then that's fine. Buy a fixer upper. It's not, you know, it doesn't cost you as much. Knowing that you need to add, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars in repairs to bring it up to, say, your standards or rental standards. Whom, however, um, a fixer upper is also a way to go. As a matter of fact, um, HUD, that's Housing and Urban Development. Uh, when there is a government-backed loan, like a VA loan, FHA loan, if there's some reason it gets repossessed and it goes back to HUD, it's a um, REO, HUD REO, real estate owned, which means they had to retake the property if they foreclosed on it. They sell those properties, but they have what's called a 203B loan, which means you get the uh, loan for the property, but you also get the um, construction funds to repair it. But you do need to find a... Um, HUD certified realtor to help you buy those properties. They're not available on the open market. But again, it's one way to buy a home. So the last thing I want to tell you, suggest is that you could, you know, you have your physical real estate, but you have your paper real estate. And by that, I mean, you can buy uh, exchange traded funds that the underlying stocks are real estate investment trust. Um, an ETF is a pool of real estate stocks, for example. So that's one way in ETF, but you could also buy a REIT, R-E-I-T, real, real Estate Investment Trust. Um, so that's a paper way to get into uh, real estate. So, and if you don't, you know, if you only have a few dollars, like less than, I don't know, less than, well, less than a down payment, you know, start with paper real estate. And I will actually, I do have a link for you in the description box. It is five alternative ways to get started with real estate. So I wanted to leave you with a few um, things to look up uh, from sources deemed reliable. For example, I was going to tell you that you could uh, use crowdfunding to invest, right? So there are Investopedia, you may have heard about Investopedia. It provides um, finance, financial information for you know, people, interested parties. If you have questions, you can go to investopedia.com and they suggest, they have a list of crowdfunding sources, which is one way crowdfunding means you are pooling your money to invest with others. So the best one for investors, excuse me, beginners, according to Investopedia is Fundrise. You can pool your money with others and Fundrise buys and maintains and manages whatever this uh, portfolio and your minimum investment is only $500. So that was considered Fundrise, according to Investopedia, is the best one for beginners. And now the best one overall is called CrowdStreet. Now the thing with CrowdStreet, however, is that their minimum investment is 25,000. So you may or may not be able to start there. Um, so I'm not promoting that. I'm just saying that that is ranked best by Investopedia. Now, the other one that is a really good REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust crowdfunding platform is called Diversive Fund. And that one also has a $500 minimum. So if you only have a small amount of money, consider crowdfunding and buying paper real estate until you make enough money to 
by physical real estate. So those are just a few ideas which I hope you will take to heart because real estate is should be in part of Real estate should be part of everyone's investment portfolio, and it is one of the top five ways to make increase your wealth. So that might have been a lot of information because I feel like I ran through it quickly, but you know, you can always reach out to me with questions in the comment box. And that has been today's Morning Moxie, and I will see you on the next video. Cheers.